All right, less tweeting, more talking. Social media, love it, hate it, or fear it, you have to agree it's fast become an integral part of our modern society. As to whether or not we should watch our proverbial tongues when we engage with it, and the answer is not so yes or no. Immediately, I would state that nobody should be expected to censor themselves, especially on a medium as free as the internet. Unlike in real life, where we have legal restrictions on what we can and cannot say, strictness dependent on geographical location, the internet isn't really bound by these laws. The internet is fundamentally the Wild West, a whole mess of people just out for themselves, with a few small factions giving the semblance of order amongst the chaos dotted around the web. Yes, many of the social media sites and services that we use have their own community guidelines, but first of all, there's a somewhat blasé attitude to actually reading the damn things, let alone adherence to them, and secondly, they still give us all a staggering amount of freedom of expression. And therein lies the danger. As Matt points out in his video, any one of us has the right to type and publish the statement, I hate the gays, and I'm not disputing that. I mean, you and I most likely will no longer be friends if that's how you feel, but you knock yourself out, you crazy bigot. With any luck, you'll do it literally. And neither does he, but he does purport that you should be prepared to deal with the backlash of expressing such controversial views or presumably just leave the internet forever and never have to deal with the consequences of your words. This is the thing. Matt is fundamentally saying that you shouldn't feel unable to express yourself as you see fit on social media, but you should definitely think about the repercussions of what you say, which is something that quite a lot of people don't do. I won't name and shame, but I can think of a number of notable examples within the YouTube community. It's something to consider. In today's society, the always online nature of our lives gives social media an immediacy which is sometimes pretty good, but can also be detrimental. Twitter, for example, is used by a number of people, myself included at times, as a means to vent, a cathartic way of expressing vitriolic sentiments and feelings. The immediate nature of Twitter, however, means that at times, one can tweet something in the heat of the moment and not fully think through the implications. These can be anything from personal damages. Consider the infamous Twitter joke trial where Paul Chambers was taken to court over a joke tweet that was taken as a serious terrorist threat to harming others, perhaps subtweeting hurtful or slanderous statements about other members of society. This is particularly important to online personalities such as creators. Each of them has an audience, some with masses of loyal fans, to whom they have a level of responsibility. If a creator with millions of fans makes a negative remark about another other user, perhaps during an argument or a state of rage, it can lead to large numbers of their followers conducting a virtual onslaught of that individual, which can be severely detrimental. One innocuous comment can lead to someone being harassed for something long after the original instigator has calmed down. Sometimes it's even done on purpose by people with easily bruised egos trying to drown out naysayers. It's also important to note that many YouTubers have an audience of a largely young demographic. That's hundreds if not thousands of impressionable youths listening to every word they say. They're effectively engaged in moulding young minds, and that's not something to take lightly. Sure, there's a degree of parental responsibility, and maybe they shouldn't be allowing their children to watch videos by people that cater to more mature audiences. But those with young audiences need to realise that the need to be a respectable influence is there too. If not careful, they could pass on their flaws, prejudices, and reinforce negative mindsets and whole swaths of the generation, even if unintentionally. It's the price of fame. And that whole responsibility is something that Nathan touched upon in his video. But this is something not a lot of people want to face or own up to. Not everyone on YouTube is looking for fame, but sometimes they do get it. Just because you didn't ask for something doesn't mean you can shirk the responsibilities that come with getting it like an unplanned pregnancy. You have to act, if not solely with the best interest of your audience, at least with that in mind. You don't have to pander to or restrict yourself for them, but at least be considerate to how your words and actions might be interpreted and the effect that they could have. So should we be careful what we post? Not necessarily, but do try to respect the responsibility you have to the people that look up to you and be prepared to shoulder the consequences of what you do say. But what do I know? I hate foreigners. So that video was a talk response. I haven't done one of those in a while. If you click here, you can go to the talk channel and see more of it, or you can go to the links down there. Leave a comment here on the original videos and I'll see you next time.